low energy adaptive clustering hierarchy IEEE 802.15.4 MAC that includes network architecture and type, roles of nodes, super frame, structure, GTS management, data transfer, slotted CSMA CA protocol. Low energy adaptive clustering hierarchy, LEACH, is a time division multiple access MAC protocol with clustering features. A network is formed as star topology in two hierarchical levels as shown in the figure. A cluster consists of one cluster head and a number of ordinary nodes. All the ordinary nodes communicate with the cluster head directly. On the other hand, there is a single base station which communicates with all the cluster heads. Direct communication with high transmission power is used in order to ensure the cluster head can reach the base station. The cluster head aggregates the data of its members and transmits it to sync mode or to other nodes for further relaying. Since the sync is often far away, the cluster head must spend significant energy for this transmission. For a member, it is typically much cheaper to reach the cluster head than to transmit directly to the sink. The cluster head's role is energy consuming since it is always switched on and it's responsible for the long range transmission. If a fixed node has this role, it would burn its energy quickly and after it died, all its members would be headless and therefore useless. Therefore, this burden is rotated among the nodes. Specifically, each node decides independent of other nodes whether it becomes a cluster head and therefore there is no signaling traffic related to cluster head selection. This decision takes into account when the node served as cluster head the last time such that a node that has not been a cluster head for a long time is more likely to elect itself than a node serving just recently. The protocol is around base that is all nodes make the decision whether to become a cluster head at the same time and non cluster head nodes have to associate to a cluster head subsequently. The non cluster heads choose their cluster head based on received signal strength. The network partitioning into clusters is time variable and the protocol assumes global time synchronization. After cluster has been formed, each cluster head picks a random CDMA code for its cluster, which it broadcasts and which its member nodes have to use subsequently. This avoids a situation where a border node belonging to cluster A distorts transmission directed to cluster head B, as shown in the figure inter-cluster interference. A critical network parameter is the percentage of nodes that are cluster head. If there are only few cluster heads, the expected time distance between a member node and its cluster head becomes longer and therefore the member has to spend more energy to reach its cluster head while maintaining a given bit error rate target. On the other hand, if there are many cluster heads, there will be more energy expensive transmission from cluster head to the sink and less aggregation. Therefore, there exists an optimum percentage of cluster head. Leach can achieve a seven to eight times lower overall energy dissipation compared to the case where each node transmits its data directly to sink and between four and eight times lower energy than in a scenario where packets are relayed in multi-hop fashion. The protocol is organized in arounds and each around is subdivided into a setup phase and steady state phase as shown in the figure. The setup phase starts with the self-election of nodes to cluster heads. In the following advertisement phase, the cluster head inform their neighborhood with the advertisement packet. The cluster head content for medium using a CSMA protocol with no further provision against the hidden terminal problem. The non cluster head nodes pick up the advertisement packet with a strong received signal strength in the following cluster setup phase 
the members inform their cluster head again using a CSMA protocol. After the cluster head setup phase, the cluster head knows the number of members and their identifiers. It constructs a TDMA schedule, picks a CDMA code randomly and broadcasts this information in the broadcast schedule subphase. After this, the TDMA steady state phase begins. Because of collision of advertisement or joint packets, the protocol cannot guarantee that each non-cluster head node belongs to a cluster. However, it can guarantee that nodes belong to at most one cluster. The cluster head is switched on during the whole round and member nodes have to be switched on during the setup phase and occasionally in the steady state phase according to their position in the cluster's TDMA schedule. Limitations of leech. Leech could not be able to cover large geographical areas of some square miles or more because a cluster head two miles away from the sink likely does not have enough energy to reach the sink at all, not to mention achieving a low bit error ratio. If it can get arrange that a cluster head can use other cluster heads for forwarding, this limitations can be mitigated. IEEE 802.15.4 MAC The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer, that is IEEE, released the 802.15.4 MAC standard for wireless personal area network, WPANS, equipped with the duty cycle mechanism where the size of active and inactive parts can be adjustable during the PAN information. Under this, the first is network architecture and types, roles of nodes. In IEEE 802.15.4 MAC combines both the scheduled based and contention based protocol and supports two network topology, star and peer to peer network topology as shown in the figure. The applications of 802.15.4 are wireless sensor networks, home automation, home networking, connecting devices to a PC, home security. There are two special types of peer-to-peer -to -peer topology. The first one is known as cluster tree network, which has been used extensively in Zigbee. The other known as mesh network, which has been extensively in IEEE 802.15. The standard defines two types of nodes, namely the full function device FFD and reduced function device RFD. The full function device node can operate with three roles as a PAN coordinator, a coordinator and a device while RFD can only operate only as a device. The device must be associated with the coordinator in all the network conditions. This multiple coordinator can either operate in a pure topology or star topology with the coordinator becoming the pan coordinator. The star topology is more su suitable for delay critical application and small network coverage while the peer to peer topology is more applicable for large networks with multi hop requirements at the cost of higher network latency. Furthermore, the standard defines two modes on how data exchanges should be done, namely the beckon mode and the non beckon mode. The beckon provides networks with synchronization measures, while the non beckon modes provides the asynchronous features to networks. Super frame structure. The beckon mode of IEEE 802.15.4 MAC defines a super frame structure to organize the channel access and data exchanges. The super frame structure, as shown in the figure, with two main periods, the active and the inactive period. The active period is divided into 16 time slot. Typically, the beckon frame is transmitted into the first time slot and it is followed by two other parts. Contention access period, CAP and contention free period CFP which utilizes the remaining time slots. 
The CFP path is also known as guaranteed time slots, GTS, guaranteed time slot, and can utilize up to seven time slots. The length of active and inactive periods as well as the length of single time slots are configurable and traffic dependent. Data transmissions can occur either in CAP or GTS. In CAP, data communication is achieved by using slotted CSMA CA, while GTS nodes are alloc allocated fixed time slots for data communication. The strategy to achieve each energy efficient operation in IEEE 802.14.4 MAC is by putting the nodes to sleep during the inactive periods. And when there is neither data to be transmitted nor any data to be fetched from the coordinator. However, the burden of energy cost is put on the coordinator whether the coordinator has to be active during the entire active period. GTS management. GTS stands for guaranteed time slot. The coordinator allocates GTS to devices only when the latter sends appropriate request packet to the CAP. One flag in the request indicates whether requ the requested time slot is a transmitted slot or a received slot. In a transmitter slot, the device transmits packets to the coordinator and in received slot, the data flows in the reverse direction. Another field in the request specifies the desired number of contagious time slots in GTS phase. The coordinator answers the request packet in two steps. An immediate acknowledgement packet confirms that the coordinator has received the request packet properly but contains no information about the success or failure of the request. After receiving the acknowledgement packet, the device is required to track the coordinator's beacon for some specified time. When the coordinator has sufficient resources to allocate a GTS to the node, it inserts an appropriate GTS descriptor into one of the next beacon frame. This GTS descriptor specifies the short address of requesting node and the number of position of time slot within GTS phase of the super frame. A device can use its allocated slot each time they are announced by coordinator in the GTS descriptor. If the coordinator has sufficient resource, it generates a GTS descriptor for time slot zero, indicating the available resources in the descriptor led field. Upon receiving such a descriptor, the device may consider re -notigation. In the device received, no GTS descriptor within a GTS descript persistent time, that is a time after sending the request, it concludes that the allocation request has failed. A GTS is allocated to a device on a regular basis until it is explicitly deallocated. The deallocation can be requested by the device by means of a special control frame. After sending this frame, the device shall not use the allocated time any further. Data transfer. Assume that a device wants to transmit a data packet to the coordinator. If the device has an allocated transmit GTS, it wakes up just before the time slot starts and sends its packet immediately without running any carrier sense on other collision avoid avoiding operation. However, the device can do so only when the full transaction consisting of the data packet and an immediate acknowledgement sent by the coordinator as well as an appropriate interframe space IFS fits into the allotted time slot. Handshake between coordinator and device when the device retrieves a packet is seen in the figure. If this is not the case or when the device does not have any allocated slot, it sends its data packet during the cap using the slotted CSMA protocol. The coordinator sends an immediate acknowledgement further for the data packet. Now, 
assume the coordinator assumes wants to send a data packet to the device if the device has located a received gts and when packet acknowledgement ifs cycle fits into these the coordinator simply transmits the packet into the allocated time slot without further coordination the device has to acknowledge the data packet as seen in the figure the coordinator announces a buffered packet to a device by including the device's address into pending address field or the backend frame when the device finds its address in pending address field it sends a special data request packet during cap the coordinator answers this packet with an acknowledgement packet and continues with sending the data packet the device knows upon receiving the acknowledgement packet that it will sh it shall leave its receiver on and prepare for incoming data packet which in return is acknowledged otherwise the device tries again to send the data request packet during one of the following super frames and optionally switches off its trans receiver until the next beckon then comes slotted csma ca protocol when nodes have to send data or management packet during cap they use a lot slotted csma protocol the protocol contains no provisions against hidden terminal solution for example there is no rts and cts handshake to reduce the probability of collision the protocol uses random delays it is thus a csma ca protocol that is used the time slot making up the cap is subdivided into smaller time slots called back off period one back off period has a length corresponding to 20 channel symbol times and slots considered by slot csma ca protocol are just these back off periods 